All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about what the cyclic voltammetry of a capacitor uh, looks like. And so if you know the fundamental uh, equation of a capacitor, uh, it's that the capacitance C is equal to the charge stored between the two capacitor plates um, divided by the uh, voltage, okay? So um, if we think about the units here really quickly, right? Q has units of coulombs. We abbreviate with C. And V is units of volts. So joules per coulomb. So we have um, C divided by J over C. So we end up with C squared over uh, J. Uh, so that actually is equal to what we call farad. So capacitance is immune to farad most typically. But anyway, if we um, go one step further and we now uh, multiply uh, voltage on by both sides, we get the charge equals the capacitance times the voltage. And now I'm gonna take the derivative with respect to time um, on both sides. And if so we do that, right, we would get uh, C um, dV dt, and we take the derivative here, we get dQ dt, okay? Well, what are these terms? This term is the change in charge with time. That is the same thing as current. And right? current has units of coulombs per second. That's an amp. So we call this current, giving it the symbol I. This is dV to T. It's how you're changing the voltage with time. That's the same as the scan rate. Standard units here would be volts per second. So you end up with uh, a very nice equation, which says that your current I of your cyclic voltammogram is gonna be equal to some constant, the capacity of your uh, the capacitance of your capacitor, right, times the scan rate. And so if we think about what the CV, an idealized CV, would look like then, when we're changing the voltage and monitoring the current, as we always do in the CV, well, we get some constant. And then whatever scan rate we get, our current would just equal like that. So when we're scanning forward, our scan rate is positive. This is a constant, so we get some positive current. And it's gonna be constant all the way through until we reverse our scan rate. When we reverse our scan rate, now dV dt is negative, or each step is negative on dV. And so this is gonna ideally hop down to the negative of itself and then when we go back to positive scan rate, we're going to go back up to the positive. So ideally, the CV of a capacitor is a perfect rectangle. Okay. Now, if we increase the scan rate, what would happen? Well, we would get the same shape, but just a taller rectangle, right? Because now dV dt is higher. C hasn't changed because that's just determined by our capacitor on our electrode material. And so to get something like that. Now, you never get a perfect rectangle because the capacitor can't respond instantaneously from this current positive current to negative current and from negative current to positive current. In order to do that, you have to discharge the capacitor and that takes some time. And so what you end up getting in a, in, um, a less than ideal case, right, in sort of the realistic case, is you get something that instead has a little bit of curve to it. So it may look like this, right? Some curve. And how much curvature there is with respect to faster scan rates, give you information about how well this capacitor can charge and discharge, okay? Now, why is this very useful? Well, one, there's a whole field of people trying to make supercapacitors for energy storage. Um, but beyond that, this is the main non-Faradaic process 
that goes on in CVs. And so this has nothing to do with actually a reaction taking place. It doesn't have to do with stoichiometry taking place, like silver ions going to silver metal or nitrogen being reduced to ammonia or anything like that, right? This is just current that is built up due to the capacitive nature of the double layers. So, you know, if your electrode is negatively charged, you have some positive ions on top and some negative ions on, on the on top of that, and it keeps going um, following various models, but there's charge associated with this Q and there's voltage, so then there's capacitance associated with that. And so when you do a CV of, of something that is redox active, like ferrocene, for example, you'll always have that capacitive or non-Faraday component superimposed on top of it. So you can see if we were to look at the Faraday component, we would maybe just be looking at this charge passed under these curves. The rest is this sort of rectangle shape or um, oblong rectangle superimposed on top of it. So in red here would be our Faraday processes. And the rest in black superimposed on that would be our non Faraday. Uh, non-Faraday current processes associated with this type of CV.